Welcome to our set of CanOpen and CanOpen FD videos. This is the first in a line of videos and it's meant as a pure introductory video. And there are follow-up videos which we call in-depth technology focus videos that are all available as a follow-up to this presentation. The CAN version history began in the early 90s when CAN 2.0a and 2.0b were introduced. The only difference between the two were that the 11-bit CAN message identifier was extended to a 29-bit version. So these are today compatible with each other. In the beginning, you had to double check that you were using the real hardware to support it. But today, typically all CAN controllers support the CAN 2.0b version, and so on the fly, they can switch between 11 and 29 bit identifiers. One of the recent version extensions was CAN FD. It stands for flexible data rate. And in CAN FD, the data field can be up to 64 bytes long and it can be transmitted at a higher rate, at a higher bit rate. Here, some implementations do 10 or more bits per second. Unfortunately, such a change is not backward compatible. So if you're using a CAN controller that only speaks CAN 2.0 AOB, will not be able to participate in CAN FD communication and it will not only not participate, it will actively destroy these messages with error frames because it doesn't know how to handle them. So when using CAN FD, all CAN controllers in the network must support it. And a bit down the line, there's CAN XL extra long, which is currently under specification. Here, the main change from CAN FD to CAN XL is that the data field is even longer. However, there will be a bit used in here that uh, allows CAN FD controllers to ignore the contents. So at least it will be partially compatible in a way that CAN FD controllers will not destroy CAN XL messages. They'll simply ignore them if they can't deal with them. There have been a number of higher layer protocols published for various CAN versions. Some of the earliest and more popular ones were DeviceNet and um, by the Society of Automotive Engineers, the J1939 used a lot in automotive applications, but there's also CAN Open. And CAN Open, the nice thing about CAN Open is that it really covers all applications. It's not dedicated to a specific use field like industrial, automotive, aerospace, maritime. No, it uh, can cover a lot of that. And here the latest add-on is that now there's also CAN Open FD, which takes advantage of the extended data field provided by CAN FD. Coming from the automotive arena, CAN quickly got adopted by many different application fields simply because CAN controllers were deeply integrated into almost every microcontroller family available. Today, you can not only find CAN open in medical application and hospital beds, you can also find it in many industrial applications. Typically, a lot of electrical motors and drives are available with CAN open interfaces. So everything moving with electric motors and drives is uh, one of the strongholds of CAN open applications. But that also includes a lot of construction machinery so any crane or even forklifts and similar devices. In uh, maritime applications, we can even find safety critical control elements. So there's a safety version on can open and we can definitely also see it in uh, building automation. For example, there's a specific dedicated can open specification for elevator and lift control. So what are the advantages of a higher layer protocol like CAN Open? Well, to take full advantage of your CAN or CAN FD controller, you have to start assigning messages to certain purposes. And a higher layer protocol like CAN Open already does that for you. So you have services for network management that includes device detection, operating states, heartbeats, being able to send devices a reset. Next, we have service access service protocol. So this is a point to point communication for 
any data size. So even if you have complex data tables in drives, acceleration curves, or things like that to transfer, you can transmit data of any size, even if a single CAN or CANFD message is limited in, in data size. In regards to pure data access, there are multicast messages, so from one device to many others at the same time, with lots of different trigger options. We can do time triggers, change of state triggers, so really flexible on that end. And last but not least, we have many device and application profiles published by the CIA, the CAN in Automation Users Organization. These include in-depth definitions for how to control a motor, a drive, an encoder, or sometimes even uh, complete applications. Like I said before, an elevator system. They have by now thousands of pages of specification published. The CanOpen and CanOpenFD documents are maintained by the CIA. That is the CAN in Automation Association, a users group that hosts regular meetings for all interesting parties to help develop these documents. Next up, we are looking at the basic definition and elements of CANOPEN. Like in any digital architecture where data is exchanged, one of the basic definitions are the bits and bytes. So what are the specific data types that are supported by the system? And what is the bit ordering? So if we have bytes, words, 32-bit uh, or longer values, what type of uh, bit ordering is used to store the information? Can open defines all the standard data types that you are used to from other programming environments. So we have unsigned integers, floating times and strings, but also interestingly, we have something called the domain and that is really the catch it all for anything not defined. It can be data of any size and any type. So that allows you to, for instance, transmit code as part of the communication or larger data tables, things like that. Once we have the data types, we need to define the data itself and allow us to start creating communication parameters, variables, and so on. Well, CanOpen uses the object dictionary concept for this. This means we have something like a lookup table with an index and sub-index, and you can think of the index and sub-index as a lookup number for an entry into the table. And uh, here we have an example of the typical object dictionary entries used by CanOpen or CanOpenFD. So, for example, we have at index 1000 something called the device type information, at index 1001, all in hexadecimal, we have an error register, but we also have things like um, a string and a device name. In can open the index ranges for the 16-bit index in hexadecimal are reserved for certain um, specific use cases. So everything in the 1000 area is purely for the can open communication itself. So there's no data here. This is entirely to configure the can open communication. Then from 2000 hex all the way to 5FFF, we have the manufacturer specific area. So um, if you need to define some data that is not yet defined in any can open document, then you can create it here and create your own data um, entries. And in the area starting at 6000 hex, we have the profile defined data. So any can open device or application profile typically puts the data defined into this area. Next thing to define are nodes and networks. In can open and can open FD, we can have up to 127 nodes. So every node on the network must have a unique node ID in the range of 1 to 127. There are no 
duplicates allowed. And the idea behind the node ID is that we can individually address one device on the network. And so um, with the node ID, we can send queries like, hey, node number five, I would like to get your data from your object dictionary entry at this and this index. When running out of node IDs and you need to deploy more nodes, then they have to distribute it in different networks. Now, a single network can have up to 127 nodes. However, we can have up to 255 networks and these are connected via bridges or gateways. So we can also do some long distance routing. In CanOpenFD, this is already predefined. So from any node on any network, we can send requests to any other node on any other network. So if I'm um, node number two on net one, I can send a message to node number 30 on network number two, and that is automatically handled by the um, auto forwarding bridges which are can open FD compatible. The network management in can open gives us some basic information from all nodes on the network. So for example, every node that powers up or after reset transmits a boot up message then if configured to do so, they'll produce a cyclic heartbeat message, including their basic network management state, and they can produce emergencies in case they encounter an error situation. The network management master can control and operate the nodes by transmitting a single network management master message that instructs nodes to either switch their states or even to do an internal reset and start over again. And uh, these messages, the uh, network management master messages are uh, either broadcast, so every node can receive them simultaneously, but the network management master can also address individual nodes. There are individual protocols for service and data access. The SDO, the service data object in CanOpen, or the USDO, the universal service data object in CanOpenFD, provides us access to all parameters in the object dictionary. So they can be used to address an individual node and request an individual object dictionary entry as a read or write access. The service is a request and response so we always send a request to read or write and the response comes back either confirming that the write worked or on a read with the reply and the data requested in case the object is not available or cannot be read or written to an uh, abort is generated this service is primarily used for configuration of nodes, for diagnostic of nodes, and it can also support any parameter size. So it's good for transmitting larger data blocks, tables, or even code updates. The PDO, the process data object, is an optimized implementation for data processing because we can now have multiple object dictionary entries being transmitted or received in just one CAN or CANFD message. It's a self-triggered broadcast, so a PDO always has multiple object dictionary entries mapped into it, and by some trigger mechanism, the entire message with the multiple objects is transmitted, and it's always a broadcast, meaning that on the receiving side, it's up to the local configuration of every other node on the system if they receive this message and work with it. The triggers available can be based on time, on event changes, or synchronized by a sync message. One of the biggest benefits of CanOpen is the large number of profiles available. Now, Profiles 
are divided into device and application profiles. Let's start looking at the device profile. So a device profile defines all the parameters and data communicated by a specific device. And uh, typical examples could be a generic I.O. for digital and analog input and output, or like here 402, the drives and motion control that is a very popular device profile in can open because it defines all the many operating modes and uh, parameters involved in controlling electrical motors. This is not a complete list, but just to name a few others, there are also device profiles for encoders, inclinometers, batteries and chargers, extruders, pumps, and many other devices. When it comes to application profiles, then each application profile defines all the nodes and devices required to implement an application. So these are much more complete. And also here, just to name a few more of the popular ones, the available application profiles include a lift control system, so for lifts or elevators. Then we have various documents for trains and rail vehicles. We have uh, municipal vehicles, so that's called clean open or garbage trucks. But we also have um, specifications for photovoltaic systems, special purpose vehicles. These are emergency response vehicles, including uh, police, fire engines and ambulances. And last but not least, we have the energy management system, or also called energy bus. This is, for example, used by some e-bikes. Before concluding this class, let's review what the main differences are between can open and can open FD. Now, can open is uh, based on classical can, where can open is based on the newer can FD, with a flexible data rate, which offers a larger data packages per can frame and also at a faster bit rate. Now, in classical open, we use the SDOs, the service data objects with which we can do a maximum of four byte data exchange with a single pair of request and response. And then we start segmentation into multiple segments because the data is bigger than four bytes. Then we can transfer a maximum of seven bytes per segment. Also, the SDOs use a single master. So the idea when using SDOs is that there's only one entity in an entire can open network that can make use of the, this SDO client service. The maximum data size for a PDO is 8 bytes. In can open FD, we use the USDO, the universal service data object. Here, a single pair of request and response can transfer up to 56 bytes of data. And when we start segmentation, because we need to transfer more than 56 bytes, then each segment can have up to 60 bytes of data. And the USDO is fully meshed, meaning that every node can issue and request USDOs to each and every other node. So no dedicated master or manager owns all channels. No, everyone has a communication channel to everyone. And in regards to the PDOs, the maximum size of 64 bytes are available for PDOs in CanOpenFD. Let's wrap it up. If you're not using a higher layer CAN protocol, you're stuck with CAN and CANFD by itself. So all you have is the option to transmit and receive individual messages but you are not controlling any application yet. You need to sit down and define what message do I need to use for what. And that is something a higher layer protocol can do for you. So can open and can open FD allows you to take full advantage of what can and can FD have to offer, which includes the following. So we have the data defined that we want to communicate. We have the object dictionary that defines which parameters and um, variables are available. We have node IDs to uniquely address individual nodes on a network. 
we have the service protocol to access all parameters from everyone to everyone in CanOpenFD. And we have optimized data protocols, the PDOs. Add to that the network management and the large number of device and application profiles. CanOpen is one of the most versatile networks available. Thank you for watching this introduction. Let me give you an outlook to the other videos that we have in our YouTube channel in a playlist following this presentation. We have a brief introduction to the object dictionary concept to give you a few more details on that. Then a separate class, depending if you're using classical CanOpen or CanOpenFD, one on the SDO and one on the USDO. And the PDO classes are divided up into the section for PDO communication. That's where all the communication parameters are set. And then we have the PDO mapping class, which explains you how you determine which process data goes where in one of these PDOs. And our last class is about the network management, the NMT states that we can switch through, boot up messages, heartbeats, and of course the NMT master message.